So on this one, we're going to start in on looking at something that I'll probably bring up a few times because I have a lot of experience with them. It's called a scanning electron microscope. They're also called SEM. They use a whole lot of complicated parts to make a really incredibly powerful microscope so we can see incredibly tiny things. And it turns out that most of the stuff that we'll be learning over the next few months in class are all keys to understanding different parts of the electron microscope. Now the first thing that we actually are going to take a look at and applies here is something up in the part that, I kid you not, we actually call it an electron gun. It's our electron source. And so I've got a filament which we actually generate a whole lot of electrons with by heating it up and subjecting it to a strong electric field. Okay? And what we do is we actually put something here and we put it at an exceedingly high voltage. So I'm going to say that here we're going to call this, it's a potential difference, so our voltage change is going to be something along the lines of 5,000 volts. And that's an actual number too. In fact, that's one of the lower settings that we had on one of our SEMs that I used for research on a regular basis. Now, some of the other electron microscopes get much higher, things that go up into the uh, 300,000 range, 300,000 volts, that is. Those are usually with transmission electron microscopes, but we'll talk a little bit about that maybe later. What happens is we have a voltage difference of 5,000 volts, and we're going to accelerate these electrons through that. Okay? And what they do is they go through that voltage, they pick up a whole lot of energy, so they're going really fast, and we send them down the microscope and actually have them interact with a sample. And using some really neat science, we can actually get them to generate a really incredible image at very high magnifications. In fact, a lot of the transmission electron microscopes are capable of seeing things down onto the atomic level. You can actually use them to see atoms. Okay. The biggest thing that we are going to do right now, though, because this is a good example of how we can use voltages and understand the types of energies we get. We know that for a voltage, a potential, electric potential, that's equal to our potential energy divided by our charge. So, if I multiply both sides by my charge, I find that my potential energy, the energy that I gain from moving a charged particle through a voltage difference, a potential difference, is nothing more than we take that potential and we multiply it by our charge. Now one of the things that we did in class, the reason that I've got the voltage is marked at 5,000 volts is that's how we normally talk about it. If you'll remember in class, I brought out a DMM and looked at a 9 volt battery. And if I put the leads up one way, it said that this was at positive 9 volts and this was at 0 volts, basically. It told me that there was a potential drop across them of 9 volts. I also told you if I swapped the, the probes that it would actually say that this was at 0 volts and this was at negative 9 volts. Our voltages, it turns out, like many potential energies, back when we were doing things near the surface of the Earth, we could set our potential energy equal to 0 just about anywhere, right? We could have negative energy if we fell beneath that point, it was just we were dealing with how much compared to other locations. We didn't actually need to know the full value of the energy. And in that same vein here, we actually have a potential difference where I could say that this is at 0 volts and that this is at negative 5,000 volts. Or I could say that this is at 0 volts and this is at 5,000 volts. The important thing is in both cases, my potential difference, my voltage across this, is 5,000 volts, and that's what we end up using. So the negatives in these oftentimes are things that you don't really have to take into account. When you're adding them together, that's the sort of thing that you do want to pay attention to, but we know that the amount of energy we get from putting this electron through this voltage, this potential difference, is going to be equal to the voltage times the value of the charge there. So basically, in this case, if I plug in the direct numbers, I'll end up with a negative energy, but that's how much energy I get out of this either way. So I know my potential energy is going to be equal to 5,000 volts. 
and I'm going to multiply that by my charge. Well, the thing that's being accelerated is an electron. So the charge of an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now remember, a volt is also a joule per coulomb. And so our coulombs will cancel out. We'll be left with joules, which is what energy is in, which is great. So we can find that our potential energy, did I actually write that down? Yes. The energy that I get out of this, and so actually I'm going to mark that as PE so we don't get confused with an electric field, is going to be equal to 8 times 10 to the negative 16th joules. Very small amount of joules, but we'll see how that can still be a big deal with what we're dealing with. Now technically I'd have that negative sign come over here, but like I said with energy, we're just finding, we know that this is how much energy we got out of it. If I put the negative there and I actually solve for the next part, then I'll end up with an imaginary number, which is double plus on good. In the end, as the electron is accelerated through this voltage, I end up with this value, right? Like I said, I could always go in and say that it went from zero volts to negative 5,000 volts. That'd put a negative there and those would cancel out and I'd end up with a positive. But in the end, the big thing that you want to focus on is how much energy did I get out of this? Because obviously we got some energy. When we subject a particle, a charged particle to a voltage, it'll gain energy as it moves from one voltage to another. All right, so where did all this energy end up going? We lost it from our potential energy. It's being put into that electron. Where is it going to go? Well, it, the electron, like I said, is going to accelerate down this column. So it's probably going into kinetic energy. So I know that this energy gets put into my kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half mv squared, where v is our velocity. All right. Well, OK, so I know the energy. I know 1 half. I want to find my velocity. I need my mass. What object are we dealing with again? Well, it's an electron microscope, so we're dealing with electrons. So our mass of the electron is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. So if I plug that in here, because that's the particle that I'm looking at, I'll find that 8 times 10 to the negative 16th joules equals 1 half times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms times our velocity squared. I do a little bit of math, which I leave to you, and I'm going to solve for my velocity, and I find out that it is a whopping 4.2 times 10 to the 7th meters per second. If I've done my math correctly. That's an incredibly large number. We've never really dealt with numbers that big legitimately before, at least when it comes to velocities. In fact, in this particular assignment, I put in parentheses that you should ignore relativistic effects. Now, that's just a note in case anyone knows a lot more about physics and wants to chime in and say, it's not actually going to move that fast because of special relativity. There's going to be some other physics that we'd have to do to adjust that sum. But ignoring special relativity, this is how fast it's going. Now, the reason that's the case is because we're getting very close to the speed of light, which is c which is 3.0, roughly, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, I told you before in class, if you ever find something with mass, which, while it's very tiny, the electron still has mass, nothing with mass can ever go this fast, and it can't go faster than that, at least from our current understanding of physics. Luckily, this number, while very large, is still less than the speed of light, so this actually is a legitimate number. In fact, in electron microscopes, most of the particles are actually moving at significant fractions of the speed of light. And we'd have to do relativistic effects to fully know the exact velocity. But this is good enough for what we wanted to do. So this is an application of how voltages can be very useful for us and why they're set up to be independent of the charges themselves so that we can go in and add in whatever, or multiply in, I should say, whatever charge we want. I could have had a, a uh, microscope that is using ionized hydrogen, where instead of electrons, these are protons. And in fact, there are microscopes that use something very similar for spe special reasons. But this is how we go through and use a voltage 
to find out how fast something's going. It's all using energy and conservation of energy.